series is all about taking you to some of the most stunning locations on the island of Ireland, cooking with some of the most incredible produce that we have to offer, meeting some of the maddest characters around like me, but most of all, having an absolute laugh. This is Travels Travels! Well guys, there's nothing left for me to do but to hop on the cable car and head over to this amazing island, Dursey Island here in Cork. So let's open this up and wish me luck is all I'll say. Hey, hey, I have something here for you. Oh shit. Would you take that across to the... I will of course. To the island, uh, the end. Over to and you want me to take the post as well? Well, you can, yeah, you can do that. They're, they're waiting over there. Right yeah. Come here to me, is, is this safe, is it? Well, that's why I'm giving you the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, lads. I feel safe now, I tell you. <laughs> Not a bother. Thanks yeah. a million. No, no, no. thank you. Wish me luck. Right. Guys, we said on our way over to the island, let's try and set Trevo a challenge. And I should actually be shutting up and getting going, but it's less than 400 meters from here to the island, a distance that Michael Johnson could run in under 45 seconds. And guess what? I'm gonna show you how to do an amazing dish between now and then. A simple, this is another nightmare for the boys because I tell you what, how are we gonna film this? We're gonna make a simple prawn cocktail canopy. Get yourself a good squeeze of mayonnaise. Can I make my own? Of course you can, but I don't have the luxury of all the time of that. A little bit of ketchup. This is very fancy Mary Rose sauce. Give yourself about the same amount of ketchup. Now, in we go with a little bit of Tabasco sauce. Just a dash or two. Beautiful. And last but not least, as we go through, as I tell you what, I know I don't have much time, but I'm gonna have a sneaky peek at what's going on out here. Look at this for a view. <laughs> Absolutely spectacular. And I tell you what, lads, you have to come to Dursey Island. It's just too nice not to see. Anyway, back to cook. I can talk crap later. So a couple of drops of brandy. Oh, I tell you, I was gonna say that'll put the hairs on your chest, but you'll think I'm an alcoholic because I have plenty of them already. Get rid of the brandy. And we get ourselves a little spoon. Give it a good mix. And here is where we go. Get these gem leaves, lads. They're simple. And they're great little holders for your kind of canopies. So we're gonna put a little bit of the chopped lettuce that's left, a little bit of spring onion, one of our beautiful Dublin Bay prawns, and a little bit of our Mary Rose sauce on top. Let's get my serving dish over here. And we put one there. Now, I wanna show you how to do these. When you're poaching your prawns, guys, stick a cocktail stick up its, you figure it out, and just put it into boiling water and then turn the heat off straight away and pull out your cocktail stick straight away like that and it keeps it nice and straight, okay? So let's do another one. A little bit of your diced lettuce. How are we on time? <sighs> Plenty of it. A little bit of spring onion. One or two prawns. We put in two. And we just put a little bit of our Mary Rose sauce on top. And obviously, it's a hell of a lot easier for you guys to be doing this at home when you're not in a cable car about 500 meters up in the air. But that's the beauty of food. It's so easy. One more. A little bit of spring onion. One or two prawns. Beautiful, that's a big leaf. We'll put in two. And you put on a little bit of your Mary Rose sauce. So you guys, you get the ideas now. We just get a few there so the boys can get a shot. Put a little bit of a semi-sun-dried tomato on top, a little bit of decoration, a little bit of extra flavor. Now, huh? How are we doing on time? Ah, oh, for God's sake, I could have roasted a chicken in this time. It is Trevo after all. How easy was this? Great dinner party starty, starter, little canopies or something like that, guys. It's an absolute cracking dish. Dublin Bay prawns, you know why they were called Dublin Bay prawns? because originally that's the only place you could get them, but now you get them everywhere. We call them Kenmare Bay prawns, or langoustines, but they are absolute, probably some of the finest saltwater shellfish that we have. 
a little bit of a sun-dried tomato on top. I'm gonna put the feet up. The boy said, there's no way you're gonna be able to do this in such a short time. I said, lads, this is me you're talking about. I even have time to take a bite. Dursey Island, guys, you're gonna love this trip. I'm telling you, this episode, it is extra special. Cheers. Rosary Petal, I'm back. Good morning, Paul. How, How are, are you? you? It was great to see you. Good to see you. You're uh, welcome back again. Have you the kettle on? I have the kettle. The kettle is boiling. And what are you making for me? Scones. I love it. A few scones and a bit of jam in Rosary's house. Whoa. This is your view from your house? Yeah. It would Absolutely could, beautiful. It would be clearer today, but yeah. anyway. There's a couple of hikers. How are we doing, lads? How are we doing? Good morning. Where are you from? Ah, mon, mon père, il vient en Suisse. Canton de Vaux. Canton de Vaux. De Lyon. Wow. Alors, bienvenue de Dursey okay, Island. Parfait, le parfait, parfait. Uh, uh, un peu. Lads, it's only on Irish TV okay, where okay, all of a sudden so. <laughs> you're, you're going to be a superstar okay. now, right? Tell all the I Irish people so. in Switzerland. So. <laughs> a man from where my father came from, on Dursey Island. How cool is that? What do you want more? <laughs> Nothing, just a big handshake. <laughs> Paul. Pierre. Pierre. Merci, Pierre. Okay, well, see you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now, Rosari, not even staged. Only in Ireland. Only in Ireland that things like that happen, eh? Yes, welcome to Dursey Cottage. Thank you very much. Guys, you know me by now. There's nothing I prefer more than having somebody else doing the cooking for me. Isn't that right, Rosari? Yes, Paul, yeah, yes. I like it. What are we going to make? We're going to make scones, Lovely. plain scones today. And I said to you, I'm going to show you the cheats way on how to make jam. So simple. Remember, we used to make jam to preserve it. But if the fruit is fresh, you don't need to put in too much sugar and we want to eat it straight away. So this is how easy it is. So I'm going to take care of the jam, all right? Okay. I've got two punnets of strawberries, so chop them up simple. I don't even need to put in much sugar, about maybe 100 grams, 200 grams. And did you know, Rosari? Strawberry, the only fruit that the seed grows on the, on outside. the outside. There you are. Okay, pub quiz question. Remember that one. Now, so I'm going to try them in. A little bit of the sugar here. And that is loads. Full blast. We want to reduce it all down so all the liquid is gone from it and we'll have our jam. How easy was that? Very simple. Now, Anna, give that a quick stir. And I'm going to go back and forth, stir it a few times, and then mash it down when the fruit has softened. And what do we have? Uh, self raising flour. Lovely. We have a bit of stock margarine. Just give it all a mix up. And then we have uh, our local eggs, berry eggs. I just mix that in now in two seconds. Perfect. Now I'm folding in an egg. An egg, lovely. And then I'm putting in some milk. And uh, yeah, we got by by boat, and then we got the cable card in 60, 69. 1969. 1969, yes. That's it. So we have um, quite a few houses renovated on the I was island. gone 10 seconds to stir the jam, and you have it nearly done already. Yes, sir. There's nothing easier than making a scone, isn't it? Nothing easier than making a nice scone, yeah. Lovely. My mother always told me kneading the bread was very important. Oh, yes. Have you heard of that, Paul? I have indeed. Lovely and soft and spongy. Soft and spongy, yeah. And this is the tray you're going to put it on, is it? We yeah, need, will I heat that up? Yeah, into the oven for two seconds. Put it straight into the oven for you. Yeah. Now that's gas. I never would have done that before, but that's that's what you do? Why he, would you heating not, up the tray? Why would you not let heat your tray? I, I had a different teacher than you. They never told me to do that then. Yeah. I was kind of, yeah. My mother was my teacher. I tell you what. Yep. She's taught you well. Yeah. I've never seen scones as made as quick as it. It was real time, two minutes, done. Ha! Yeah. You tell me it's hard. By the time you got into the car, to go down and have the shop, buy your scones, how many? They'd have made hundreds of them by now. A little bit of a kind of egg wash on top. Was it a yeah. bit of milk? Little bit of milk and a small little bit of the egg that was left. Yep. Tell me now when you want now me to take that tray take it out. out. and it will be done in a second. That's enough for you already, is it? Yeah. Just a quick blast. I'll tell you what, this is a fine hot oven. What temperature would that be at now? About 180? 180, yeah. Will I hold, will I hold yeah. it for you? Yeah, that's all right, John. And how long will they take to cook? About 15 minutes. My God. So about 15 minutes, guys, for these to cook. And we're going to wait until all 
the juice is pretty much reduced down from the jam and that's it natural pectin kicked in and it'll that's thicken it up Paul straight into the oven we go to that you're telling me to like shut up and get on with it like is it it is all right <laughs> Pop them there now. We'll have a feast. We'll have a feast. I like the sound of that. Well, on the island life, it got me thinking. You see all these guys now, and they're talking about thermometers, this, and you have to use this type of sugar and this kind of stuff. And I think we've lost the plot. I think people, I think we like think too much about things. And all yeah. you need to do is throw a bit of fruit, a little bit of sugar, maybe. But there's enough natural pectin in ripe fruit that will set it anyway. And like that's exactly what we got here now. That's, okay. that's still hot now. That'll set as it cools down, but. We're not going to wait for it to cool down because those scones are too damn tasty. So we'll but be having a scone and some jam now. Absolutely. Well, I wanted to go back to basics, and that's what I was thinking there about, like, island life. Tell me a little bit. Do you, want, do you take milk at all in the tea, do you? No milk. No yeah. milk. Oh, my God. Tell no. me a little bit now about island life as a kid growing up, like. As a kid growing up on yeah. Dursey, we had all our own homemade. My mom was a good baker. Yeah. So we had all our own homemade scones. Lovely. Look and bread she used to make in the oven, in the yeah. Bastable bread. And then... We had our own jam as well from our blackberries. The blackberries grown here on, on the, the island? On the island, yeah. We used to have lots of blackberries, yeah, growing on the island. Jeez. And uh, we had um, we had all our own food, really. We yeah. didn't have to be... Self-sufficient. Self-sufficient, yeah. Back in the day when there was no such thing as local and artisan and all these fancy words, you our, were already that anyway. Yes. It's a bit had, like the Wild Atlantic Way. Wild Atlantic... It, it was always there. It was always there. And somebody put a bloody name on it. Yes. And now all of a sudden, it's a tourist attraction. Tourist <laughs> attraction, yeah. Rosario, I tell you what, that's it's not, it's not basic. That's classic. That's brilliant. Scones, jam, done in minutes, so simple, whilst having a chat with an islander. Doesn't yep. get much better than that. No. We'll finish our tea. We'll finish our tea, yes. Slanta. Slanta. I had yet again a fantastic time. I'm fa I don't know if I'm falling in love with you or falling in love with the island. Well, but I will be back. Come again. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Emil. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Guys, how cool was that? Sitting in an islander's house making scones and jam, having great crack and a cup of tea. I loved it. I had a great time with Rosaria all the time and I almost love her as much as I love this island. Check out the view here, guys. You can see a boat miles away there. It's absolutely stunning. But coming up after part two, I'm on my way down to the pier. Apparently, there's a little bit of a surprise down there for me and I'm gonna have to cook it. So, don't go anywhere. You're gonna love this one. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back after the break, guys. And I think the surprise was that there's nobody here. But I do see a bag over there with my name on it. So let's see what's in it. Well, it looks like there was a surprise after all, guys. <laughs> so close to freedom, boys. But you just met Trevo. Here we are on the rocks, Trevo at his best, wild cooking lobsters. Guys, this is gonna be an absolute dream ticket. Okay, so we have got a fire on the go at Woodmark 4. Hang on a second, maybe Woodmark 5. So we throw that in, and guys, there is nothing better than cooking lobster in the wild than right here on the rocks. This is gonna be absolutely beautiful, simple. So let's get a bit of an owl, some sort of a grate. Everybody wants to know the most humane way to kill a lobster. Okay, so let's just go through it. Some guys turn around and they say, okay, freeze him for half an hour to put him to sleep. It doesn't put him to sleep, it freezes him. Other guys say, put him into a nice big 
pot of cold water and bring it up to the boil slowly. That's killing them slowly. This is the way to do it for this particular dish, okay? Trust me, because if you're worried about a lobster having feelings, there's a good chance he has hearing too. And he's down here going, hello, I'm down here, I can hear you. So let's just get it over and done with nice and quickly. It's simple. He's got a little cross right in the middle of his head. And we get a very sharp knife and we go. He is now dead and he didn't feel a damn thing. He didn't hear me talking about it and he didn't see anything. And it is simple. The only problem is, is his mate there is going, hello? Yes, you are next. So we go straight down. And this is absolutely beautiful. One lobster split in half. Now take a close look at this, guys, because the only thing you can't eat is his intestinal sac. You see that? Gross. Let's leave that there for the crabs. We'll give something back to mother nature. So we take them straight out. Everyone's sitting at home going, oh my God. Well, they have them, guys, and we need to get rid of them, okay? So now, beautiful. Lobster, lobster, and a claw there. And we get the next guy. You see, he's flipping because he saw what happened. See the cross right there in the middle of his head? Point of your knife, right into it, and straight down. He is now also dead. And we just give a little crack on the back of his shell. Just sort of heating it in. Beautiful. And they cook so easily, so quickly. Same again, take off his bands. Don't worry, we'll pick up everything. Like you're saying here, a dinner party, and it took like a couple of minutes to make. You're splitting a lobster in half. This is so, so good. This guy lost his claw. We'll throw him on, take off the band, and off we go. Again, that's just to get a little bit of heat in through the claw. Straight in, waste nothing. Now, would you believe two minutes of madness and that's all the hard work over. So we're just gonna give the old wipe of the hands. Now, our lobsters are cooking away nicely. So, a little bit of butter, a little bit of garlic, Worcestershire sauce, all into a pot, blitz it all up, taste it, use your head. Does it taste good? Then it's good, it's simple. So we're gonna put our lobsters there, a little bit of garlic butter on the side. Now, what else is done really quickly and easily on the barbecue? Corn on the cob. So just put a little bit of butter here onto it. And our lobster is already beginning to cook away absolutely beautifully. And the great thing about this is that the shell protects it from all the heat. So you can leave it on there. And once you see the flesh turning that it's cooked, it's cooked and you won't burn anything. That's why we're doing it in the shell. Now, look at this. And here's the thing, guys. If you have a wheelbarrow at home, you have a barbecue. Fill it with a few stones first and then just light your fire in it as well. So we're gonna keep a little bit of that back. And look, rock pool, my own natural sink. All you health and safety guys, where's your sink? Where are you gonna clean your hands? In the rock pool. See, mother nature, you are a genius. Or maybe it's me, one of us is. Okay, so really, really nice. Lovely clean board, and we can start again. So our corn on the cob. A little bit of oil. Simple as, roll it around. And you want the kind of charred effect. We just leave it on the side so it doesn't get too burnt. Now, where's my tongs? We just lift that up here now, guys, so we can get a little close up. So you can see it turning pink, and it's beginning to cook ever so nicely. So let's get these guys right onto the heat. Because believe it or believe it not, we aren't a million miles away from it. Now, salad. Oh, see, told you. You wouldn't know. Kyle, you got to stay on me, my man, because I could be gone in a second. A bag of salad. This is the easiest way you'll ever see to make a salad. No washing up. Look at that. Look at your different mixed leaves, Swiss chard, rocket, baby jam, all that kind of stuff. In we go. Great tip coming up. Pay attention. Okay, clean your knife. All the pips are in the middle of a lemon. So I'm just gonna take a little slice through here. Look at that. And there we've got our lemon with no pips in it. So just squeeze in the lemon into the bag. And hey, 
If you ever wondered where we got lemon sole from, that's where we get it from. I've cracked that joke about 10 times, guys. It never gets old. A little bit of oil. Just about a tablespoon. And it's just simple flavors, guys. It's cooking. A Little bit of oil, a little bit of acid, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. That is your simple salad. Good sprinkle of salt. Plenty of pepper, corn going in. We'll do the same on our lovely lobsters. I have no idea if any of this pepper is going onto it, but we'll pretend it is. Look at that, perfect time trying to escape on me. Turn over your, turn over your corn on the cob. It's just so easy, it's just so amazing. And this is what I love about my country, and this is what I love about my food. If you use your brain, guys, there is an endless amount of things you can do here. And have fun, imagine doing this with your kids, with your friends, having an absolute blast. So, here's what we do with our salad. Give it a little shaky shaky. And we'll throw it lovely onto our, all mixed up. Look at this. Look at that. We get a little bit of lemon wedge for decoration because we're about three or four minutes away from cooking here, guys, okay? So don't rush anything. Just get your plate nice and ready. Look at this, a couple of wedges of lemon. Just for garnish. Fellas, they're always mad about garnishing and all this kind of stuff, so you've got to keep everybody happy. I'm going to enjoy myself for two or three minutes. I'm going to let these bad boys finish off cooking. The guys will do all their usual camera shots. Directors, they're mad into that lovely scenery and bubbly butter and all that kind of stuff. We'll be back in a couple of seconds when these guys are ready to plate up. So guys, by now you've seen a couple of lovely scenic shots, some close-ups of the lobster and all that kind of stuff, and we are pretty much good to go. And if you listen very carefully, this is where people actually make the mistake. Well, he's squealing, he's not actually squealing. It's the flesh inside expanding out and pushing any fluid out through the shell, that's what it is. So look at this guys, we are so good to, I better bring the plate over here to me. And how easy was it? How do you know if it's cooked guys? Just touch the flesh like that, it's firmed up enough but not too firm, okay? That, too firm, you've overcooked it. So let's get a couple of these bad boys here. I'll tell you what, lads. I don't normally taste the food when I cook it because I don't have to, but I'm definitely doing it this time because you cannot beat, whoa, it's getting hot. You cannot beat lobster cooked on the barbie just like this. Look at that, guys. How simple, how amazing. How beautiful, how natural, how wild is that? Guys, did you see that? We've just after cooking lobsters on the rocks, it took minutes because that's how easy it is to cook when you follow me and you're cooking with Trevo on my travels. Get a close up guys, because I'm gonna be tucking into that very soon. Guys, just when you think it can't get any better, we've after nailing another cracking episode of Trevo Travels. All we're trying to do here, guys, is showcasing some stunning parts of the country that don't get as much attention as they should. This is the only cable car in Ireland. That in itself is a reason to come here. It's a beautiful island. You can come down here, stand on these rocks and say, that's where that lunatic split a lobster in half and cooked them right on the rocks on the middle of a flame. It's all about having a laugh, beautiful locations, cooking amazing produce. I brought a knife and fork, but you know what? I forgot it was me. I'm gonna be eating this now, guys, because it, mm, so damn good. Come back next week. I'm not too sure where I'm gonna be, but I can tell you one thing, lads. There's a good chance I'll be cooking swan. <laughs> See you later.